This pneumatic fundamentals video will cover the basics of pneumatics, including the terminology, the importance of the air supply, and a foundation of knowledge so you can go on to calibrate and troubleshoot pneumatic controllers. We'll examine the operating characteristics of pneumatic controls that make them ideal for commercial building control applications, both local loop and central equipment control. The source of power for these systems is compressed air, which is networked throughout buildings with quarter-inch polyethylene tubing. The compressed air controls valves, dampers, and relays. Pneumatic devices and installations require very little mechanical experience to install, troubleshoot, and repair, yet they accommodate complex control logic solutions. Pneumatics can control the central equipment and the local loop. In this local loop example, the TP970 thermostat is controlling perimeter fin tube heat. They are also used to control other unitary equipment such as fan coils, VAV boxes, unit ventilators, and rooftop units. For central equipment control, the RP920 family of controllers are used. In this example, the RP920 is controlling flow to a coil in an air handler. They are also used to control small and large air handlers, humidifiers, boilers, chillers, cooling towers, heat exchangers, and supply water distribution. They are available in a number of styles to meet a variety of common HVAC control applications. A pneumatic control system consists of a main supply air station, a reliable air distribution system, and a network of thermostats, relays, and actuators controlling various pieces of HVAC equipment. As mentioned earlier, these thermostats can control a variety of unitary equipment as well as zone air handlers. It all starts with a proper source of supply air to provide the energy to make it all work. A pneumatic control system must have a source of clean, dry, oil-free air at a constant pressure and of adequate volume to operate correctly. This is particularly true of thermostats and other controllers like relays, as their small internal parts and orifices will not handle dirt, oil, or moisture. These devices are often located in cooler environments, which causes any moisture present to condense into liquid water, and the lower pressures of an air distribution system compound the problem. A good air supply begins with a reliable air compressor and tank that is fitted with an automatic water drain. The high pressure air then passes through the dryer and filter station, then travels out and around the building to each of the thermostats. Again, a good source of supply air begins with a reliable compressor. The compressor is ideally a belt drive, oil bath type, because they run cooler, thus produce minimal oil blow-by, are durable, have good longevity, and are highly reliable. The tank will provide a large volume of air and will condense a lot of water out of the air. And this is a good thing, as it is the first stage of dehumidification of the air supply. The water that collects in the tank needs to be continually drained to avoid loss of volume in the tank, and more importantly, to prevent moisture carryover into the air supply. A quality auto drain should be employed, or have someone standing by to manually drain the tank throughout the day. The highly compressed tank here has been warmed by the heat of compression and easily reaches 100% relative humidity, causing the moisture to easily condense. Even so, this hot, pressurized air leaving the tank still has too much moisture for pneumatic control systems. We need to remove all moisture because any water will destroy a pneumatic control system. An air dryer, either refrigerant or a desiccant, must be installed and maintained to further remove moisture from the air supply. Because the air temperature in a dryer is dropped below its dew point temperature, the air leaving the dryer is cold and somewhat moist, but that's okay. The air from the dryer enters the pressure reducing valve, or PRV, station, where several things happen. The air is cleaned by a filter, and the tank pressure is reduced to a usable main air pressure by the pressure reducing valve. The reduced pressure and cooler temperature air reduces the relative humidity. It drops further as the air is delivered throughout the warmer, ambient temperatures of the building. Now we have very dry air at a safe working pressure. The circled M pictured here is seen multiple times on installation drawings. 
and represents the air supply station down in the mechanical room. The PRV station noted on our last slide consists of a submicron filter intended to remove any dust and oil from the air supply. This filter has a drain cock on the bottom and needs occasional draining. The filter should also be washed regularly. The pressure reducing valve, PRV, reduces the 100 psi tank pressure down to a safe working pressure of around 18 to 25 psi, depending on the layout of the pneumatic system. Even though most devices need only 16 to 18 psi operating pressure, remember there are great pressure drops from this station out to points of use. So we need to maintain higher pressures to accommodate these expected drops. A high side and a low side pressure gauge is also provided for a quick visual check of pressures. There are also dual pressure PRVs available to accommodate dual pressure thermostats, such as the day, night, and the summer, winter line of thermostats. These have two set points, such as one for the day and one for the night. The changeover from a day to night set point is done by switching the main air pressure from a lower to a higher pressure such as 13 to 18 PSI or 16 to 22 PSI. We'll examine this application in detail in a later session on calibrating day-night thermostats. For right now, it is important to know that the air pressure switchover is usually determined by a time clock and a dual pressure PRV, or with two PRVs that switch between one or the other with an electronic air switch wired to a time clock. Pneumatic controllers modulate the amount of heat delivered. They do not turn the heat on and off like a residential thermostat. They modulate because of the way they bleed air to regulate their output pressure, as explained in the next few slides. This is called inherently modulating. In this way, they can easily proportion the amount of heating or cooling required to meet current load conditions. Just the right amount of heating or cooling is released from the mechanical equipment resulting in a balanced building condition. To really understand why proportional control is ideal for buildings, we need to first examine conventional two-position control. A typical two-position thermostat, like the one here controlling a fin tube or on our home furnace, is either on or off in response to low conditions in the building. In this case, the heat output is either 100% or 0% when in fact, the amount of heat required to balance the building load might only be 40%. Building temperatures will then rise and fall as the equipment cycles. A pneumatic thermostat's ability to modulate the output of mechanical equipment provides a means to proportion the amount of energy released to match the energy loss or gain in the building. In the case of this fin tube, if the heat loss from the building is around 40%, then the amount of heat replacement will be around 40% as well. In this way, we can easily balance load conditions in the building. All pneumatic controllers function this way. How can they do this, you ask? The modulating output pressure of a controller is called the branch line pressure, BLP. This output pressure varies as the sense temperature varies. That is, as the space temperature increases and decreases, so does the branch line output pressure increase or decrease. Notice how the pressure drops as the temperature drops in this heating example. The range of temperature is adjustable on all pneumatic controllers and is called the throttling range. The range of temperature through which the valve or damper is modulated or throttled. The throttling range allows us to proportion energy to meet the load, to add heat to the building at the same rate it is being lost. The heart of a pneumatic controller, a pneumatic thermostat, is a simple but effective device called the nozzle flapper assembly. It provides a way to bleed off supply air to produce a smooth modulated output control signal. This modulating output signal is referred to as the branch line and provides the control signal to operate valve or damper actuators as well as other pneumatic relays. Let's take a look at how this device works. The output of a pneumatic controller, the branch line, can operate various types of pneumatic actuators to accommodate the control of HVAC equipment. In a later video, we will examine the construction and operation of pneumatic valve and damper actuators, 
For now, we will simply state the output BLP, the branch line pressure of thermostats, will be used to control all types of HVAC equipment. And now we'll get back to the discussion at hand, how thermostats work. Here's a simple conceptual view of a bleed type controller. By allowing the air to bleed out of the nozzle gap at a controlled rate, the air pressure will be reduced in the nozzle of the thermostat. This is because the loss of air bled off cannot be replaced quickly enough due to the restriction in the incoming main air line. As the temperature varies, the flapper force will vary, and the corresponding pressure is calibrated to vary between 3 and 13 psi. And this variable air pressure will be the same at the nozzle as well as in the branch line out to the actuator. The bimetal flapper assembly and the resulting variable air pressure can be configured to increase pressure or decrease pressure as the temperature falls. This is how we get the thermostat to provide direct or reverse acting control and accommodate normally open or normally closed actuators. This cross-section of a TP970 thermostat shows the nozzle flapper assembly. By the flapper between the biometal and the nozzle, we can adjust the influence the biometal has on the bleed rate at the gap, thus adjusting the throttling range of the thermostat. We'll discuss more about the throttling range adjustment in our video covering thermostat calibration. The control applications and operating characteristics of all pneumatic thermostats, or controllers, are very similar. These two controllers appear to be quite different, but in fact, they both are bleed-type controllers with internal nozzle flapper assemblies. The calibration procedures for the TP970s and the RP920s are surprisingly similar. In fact, if you can troubleshoot and calibrate one, you can troubleshoot and calibrate the other. This will be demonstrated in a later video covering the calibration procedures of these controllers. A variety of pneumatic relays are usually involved in pneumatic control installations. Relays are devices that manipulate pneumatic control signals in a way to meet the needs of control strategies required for sequences of operations found in HVAC mechanical equipment applications. We will examine their operation and application in a video covering pneumatic relays. This concludes Honeywell's Pneumatic Control System Fundamentals. For more information, visit customer.honeywell.com or contact your local Honeywell office or distributor.